Hi guys, Tom Hunt here in the kit room and today's video is going to be about how to select the right sized battery for your fish finder electronics. Um, I'm fortunate enough to be sponsored by Hummingbird, so I've got a pretty useful unit here. This is the, the one that I use, it's a Helix 12 Mega SI, it's the Gen 3, it's the new one. But I'm going to teach you a little equation, so it doesn't matter if you're a different brand, it doesn't matter if you're a different unit, you just apply this equation, punch, punch the right numbers in to your uh, equation and you'll be able to figure out the battery size. Then I'm going to move on to a few other tips um, and then, yeah, that should be it for, for this video. So, my Helix 12 Mega SI Gen 3 uses one amp hour of draw per hour. So I need to know that. So for your unit, it might be different, it might be 0.7, it might be 1.2. Find out for your specific unit what the amp hour draw is per hour. You then need to times that by your maximum fishing day. So again, that's up to you. I use 12 as a good number because most of the time I'm going to be doing 12 hours or less on a boat. So I use the number 12. So currently I've got one amp hour of draw. I've got 12 hours of usage. So that gives me a final number of 12 amp hours in my battery. However, there's a caveat. For lithium ion, that would be absolutely adequate. I could go for a 12 and it would last me for a 12 hour day, that wouldn't be a problem. Lithium ion is very, very expensive, but the performance is brilliant. And it basically means that you can have a fully charged 100% battery, run it all the way down to zero and continually do that from 100 down to zero and it doesn't affect the battery life. You will normally get about 2000 charges out of a lithium ion, but you don't get any drop in performance. It will be full performance or after about 2000 charges, it then will suddenly just fall off a cliff and that's when you know it's dead. However, they're really, really expensive. So most of you are probably gonna go for a lead acid style battery. Lead acid, gel, uh, glass mat, they're all under the same banner. And if you do that, you don't take 12 amp hours, you need to try and double it. So for a day's use, I will go somewhere around 22 to 25 amp hours. And that's exactly what I've got here. I've got my 12 volt, 22 amp hour battery, and this is my single day use battery. The reason I've got this one, it's the lightest that I can get away with. And why do you double it? Well, you double it because lead acid has not the greatest performance in the bottom 50%. You can occasionally use it obviously below 50%, you can run it down to zero, but my recommendation is that you double the size of the battery so that you're only using between 100% fully charged and down to 50% and then recharging. And that more than doubles the life of the battery. Okay, um, if you're constantly taking a lead acid battery from 100 down to zero, back up to 100 down to zero, it will kill the battery really, really quickly and the performance will get pretty poor pretty quick. So my recommendation is that you have to double it. So find out what yours is. So as another example, maybe you've got 0.6 amp hour, maybe it's a Helix 7 that you've got, maybe it's 0.6 amp hours per hour. Uh, you wanna use it for 10 hours a day, that would give you six amp hours of a battery that you would need, double it to 12 to 15 to be, to be sure, and that would be fine. Again, if you were lithium ion, you could just go with a six or maybe an eight, and you'd be absolutely fine. So that's my single day use. However, sometimes I'm fishing tournaments, I'm fishing two or three days where I might not be able to charge the battery up in between. So I do also have a 45 amp hour battery here. And, it, and again, going through all of these, this is really just cost and weight saving uh, for the power performance that I'm getting. So this one is coming in at, it's fairly light, you can just about hold it there with one hand. This is about six or seven kilos, so about 14, 15 pounds. Moving up to this one, this one's probably more in the 20, yeah, that's pretty tricky to lift up. If I was stood up, it'd be okay. But this one's probably around in the 25 pound mark. So it's obviously a little bit heavier and a bit more cumbersome to like lug around. So for day use, I take this. If it's two use, uh, two day or three day use, I'll take this. Um, but I've also got a 100 amp hour battery here. 
Now I typically use this if I'm running my trolling motor. I won't get too far into that now. And I keep that in a protective case. So it's, it's the same one as these, but a bigger style and it's inside here. And I use this because it's in a protective case because it's much easier to, to carry with this handle. And I've also got, I don't know if you can see on the top here, but I can press the test button and it tells me how full it is as well. All right, so that's more of my trolling motor. But again, if I know I'm gonna go away for like a week and I won't be able to charge up, I will take this to be able to run this all week. Um, the one thing that you don't wanna do, just as a quick tip, you don't want to buy the biggest you can get and then try running your electronics, so your fish finder, and your spot lock unit off the same battery because you will get interference issues um, and you won't get the best clear reading on your screen for your fish finder. So even if I'm only going for a day, I will take two separate batteries um, to stop that interference. And my last tip, guys, is... Um, in order to extend the best possible life out of your batteries, get yourself the best possible charger. Now I've got a SeaTech uh, uh, MXS 10, so this charges at 10 amp hours per hour, uh, and it's it's not not cheap. They're about 150 quid, um, but it's got a few different units on it. So a, it's a smart charger, so it adjusts the amount of input that it's energy that it's pumping back into the battery when it's recharging to make the battery have the longest possible life. It's also got an on off switch, so when it hits maximum, so when these batteries are full, they're back up to 100%, it'll tick off, and then when the battery comes down to 98%, it reads it and it'll pump in an extra 2%, and it'll keep ticking in, turning itself on and off to keep it ticking over, over time. It won't just stay on and keep pumping it in, because you can actually damage a battery by overcharging too much. Um, these smart chargers are fantastic. They've also got a recondition button on here as well. So if you do have a battery that A, has frost damage, so if you keep it outdoors in your garage and it's not protected, you are likely to get frost damage that really, really reduces the life of the battery. That's, that's the, one of the best ways to kill a battery. The second one is leaving it uncharged is the worst possible way because I'm not a scientist, but the way that the, the plates that are inside here, the charge, the ions, they basically come on and off a, a plate and, that's, uh, and they go in between the liquid and onto the plate. And it's the difference uh, of the potential between the two that gives you the energy. When they're lower, it means they've got more uh, of the stuff that's in the liquid going onto the plates, more of the ions, and they can end up calcifying um, or it ends up, it sort of crystallizes on the plates. And if you leave a battery fully low and it crystallizes on the plates, you won't be able to get the battery back again. So you can try it on a recondition uh, if you're low-ish, but my recommendation is as soon as you get home, stick it back on a charger because you want to keep your batteries up near 100% to keep their battery life. All right, so there's a few tips. There's a quick equation for you guys. There's how to select the right batteries and which one that you might need, depending on how long you're gonna use it. Um, and also how to get the best out of your batteries. Um, using, obviously, a smart charger and also keeping it fully charged as long as you can, avoiding frost damage and avoiding long periods of time when the batteries are uncharged. There you go, guys, hope that helps. Any questions, drop them in the link below uh, or in the comments and I'll see you on the next one.